Hey everyone, welcome back. Now, filters and transforms are the backbone of image processing. Today, we'll dive deep into convolution, kernel operations, and the magic of Fourier and Wavelet transforms. This is video 16 out of 20 in our beginner series in Introduction to AI. Now, let's start off with a very simple use case. Convolution is actually a mathematical operation that combines two sets of information. In image processing, it's all about applying a filter, also known as a kernel, to an image. So we're going to get started here by walking you through some of the underlying code. In order to do that, we're going to rely on a few libraries that we used in the past, including CV2. We're going to import matplotlib dot pyplot as plot uh, for just simplicity of visualization in these exercises. And then we're going to use numpy for some of the more um, esoteric use cases later. So first what we're going to do is load our underlying image. And the underlying image that I'm excited to bring forth is the famed star bunny that you see right here. So we're going to load using CV2. That's right, you guessed it, in read. We'll call star bunny JPEG. And this time, we're going to actually make sure that this image is only brought in at grayscale. Then we're going to actually declare our kernel as a three by three filter box. So the way that I define my kernel is actually using NumPy. Um, and then I basically create a matrix of ones. What you then do is in its structure, I define it as a three by three, as I mentioned earlier. And then when they ask me actually what kind of type will this be, I'm going to make sure they're float 32s. And after that, I want to divide them all by nine. Finally, this is the step where we actually apply convolution. Remember this, because you actually could realistically be asked um, about the convolution process. So here you can call it by running filter 2D on the image. What you essentially do is you input the image, in this case, star bunny's variable, number one, which refers to its stride, and then kernel. Then we simply have to plot that image. So that way you can see what I'm about to tell you. And we're going to actually show you the original star bunny first. And then I will show you what this looks like. There is original star bunny. Remember, we grayscaled it. And now let's look at the filtered form when we actually alter the structure. And you'll notice it's very difficult <coughs> to really see any key differences here. Sorry, I'm like choking today. But the takeaway message is that there are subtle changes happening when we actually apply this filter that then render this image more useful for an algorithm. Another thing to remember is that different types of kernels actually produce different effects. You've got edge detection, blurring, and sharpening, and all of those can be achieved using very specific kernels. Now I'm going to shift focus a little bit and draw your attention to something known as a Fourier transform. The Fourier transform is particularly important because the Fourier transform allows us to analyze the frequency components of an image. It's actually a bridge between the spatial and the frequency domains. So this is where we get a little interesting. I'm going to call the NumPy library from numpy.fastfourier-transform. You can actually import a specific algorithm, FFT2 and FFT shift. So first what you can do is I'll actually compute our 2D Fourier from the image. So we'll call this transform. The transform will be FFT2 image. So we're passing star bound into that variable. Then I can call it shifted. And as shifted will just simply be FFT shift of transform. Then, what you really care about is the magnitude spectrum. So essentially what we have now is magnitude spectrum 
will be a variable that is saved from taking the log of the absolute value of that shifted value plus one. And so you can see what this actually looks like. I'm going to let you guys discover the beauty for yourselves. So magnitude spectrum, let's name it magnitude spectrum of star bunny. It is really something in my throat. So sorry, team. Watch. Oh. And there you have it. I'm going to actually zoom in just so you can appreciate this. It's pretty interesting. Oh, there we go. This is actually, it's sort of just centered on a nice point here, but this illustrates to you some of the underlying frequency features of that image. However, it's still a little bit confusing, I'm sure. You might be wondering, how could I tell anything useful about the star bunny? Well, while this might mean something to a computer, or someone who's also carrying it as a human, it's not that meaningful. It just simply looks like a random starburst. While the Fourier transformation can give us the frequency information, there's something known as the wavelet transform that does provide both frequency and spatial information. So, we're now going to shift gears just a little bit. Because in the vast ocean of data, sometimes the most meaningful insights can actually come from understanding the waves in that ocean. That's where Python Wavelet Transforms, or PYWT, enters. Now you need to realize that wavelets are mathematical functions that can actually decompose data into different frequency components. You can think of them as a magnifying glass, revealing both the fine details and the broad strokes of a signal. So, while the popular Fourier Transform gave you guys some of those frequency components, it actually lacked the ability to provide time information. Wavelets, on the other hand, offer a time frequency view, making them incredibly versatile. So, as I said earlier, PYWT is a go-to Python library for wavelet transforms. It's pretty comprehensive and offers a wide array of wavelet functions. It's also super efficient, and it's designed with both researchers and developers in mind. You might also be wondering, why do computer vision engineers love PYWT? Well, wavelet transforms excel in tasks like image compression, denoising, and feature extraction. They can actually isolate features at different resolutions, making them invaluable for detecting patterns, whether it's a texture of a fabric or the edges of a building. In essence, PYWT offers a lens to view data in a unique way capturing both the rhythm and the nuances. For computer vision engineers, it's not just about seeing, it's about understanding the symphony of frequencies that construct the visual world. So this is where I'm going to actually now import PYWT. And this is how you actually apply a wavelet transform back to that original image. So I'm gonna store them all in a variable known as coefficients. You invoke PYWT. This is the function, dwt2, and you pass in the image as well as you specify the type of wavelet transform. In this case, we're going to just simply use a higher wavelet. Then I can decompose the coefficients value variable. I'm doing this because I already know what the output is. Um, it's highly structured. And these basically capture the underlying frequencies of horizontal, of vertical detail, as well as an approximation of the underlying image. So we're going to run this. And then I'm going to now structure the query in a way that allows you all to see the plot. So first, I named it CA. And we'll title this Approximation. And just for simplicity, I'm actually going to have it output all of the things that you will care about. 
So you'll get horizontal detail, vertical detail, and you'll also get diagonal detail. Just hold tight. Um, if you find this a little bit boring or if you're not writing this along with me, feel free to just skip ahead. Otherwise, hopefully you're typing alongside with me. This is probably not the best design pattern, but again, I am doing this for simplicity's sake. Whoops. That was vertical. Now we're doing the diagonal. I promise this is going to get really exciting in a second because this is somewhat what the image actually sees or more specifically, this is what an algorithm, air quote, sees after you run a wavelet transform on the image. So here's the first approximation. As you can see, it looks very similar to our original Star Bunny. Let's look at the horizontal detail now. You can kind of see some interesting patterns here. If I zoom in a little bit more, you can just about make out the edges of the clouds. You can see Sarbani's ear, his back, his nose, and some of his eye. It's pretty cool. If we swing down to vertical detail, I see other features of Starbody, not necessarily the same array of his back, but this time that vertical line that sort of captures his profile silhouette, a little bit of his paw, and definitely more features of his ears. Also, now we're capturing some of the interesting features of the cloud bursts um, and galaxy behind him. Finally, this diagonal detail is pretty crazy. I don't really know what that could be, other than maybe a possible component of Star Bunny's paws. I think this is where his paws are, but again, now I'm just sort of trying to guess at what's going on in this uh, sea of pixels. But you can now imagine that when you look at this diagonal, vertical, and horizontal detail, how if you add just a little bit of noise and manipulate these variables, you can kind of understand how similar looking images can then be generated, um, as we're now seeing in this sort of explosion of Gen AI. They, at the end of the day, harvest and rely on some of these underlying features. So, from image compression to feature extraction, these three techniques that I just walked you through, uh, basic filters with convolution, a fast Fourier transform with a magnitude spectrum, and wavelet extraction for horizontal, vertical, and diagonal detail, are all fundamental in computer vision. Understanding them is crucial for tasks like image construction, reconstruction, denoising, and more. This is video 16 out of 20 in our beginner series and introduction to AI. By the end of the series, you'll be ready to learn more advanced concepts of AI and machine learning, which will allow you to elevate your career in tech and remain in demand on the job market. Filters and transforms are just the tip of the iceberg. As you dive deeper into computer vision, you'll encounter more advanced techniques and applications. Keep learning and keep on experimenting. Thanks, everyone.